the story is all about change. There's almost nothing that we thought was true eight years ago that's true today. And it's not so much, geez, how do we manage through change? The question really becomes, how does change drive us to do our jobs? The best bosses that I've worked for accept that. I'm Rob King, Senior Vice President of Sports Center and News at ESPN. I'm responsible for everything that Sports Center is as a brand. So it's a show, uh, it's a digital presence, um, it's a series of social handles. But Sports Center is ESPN's promise to fans to be there reporting the news and telling stories about sports virtually at a 24-7, 365 level. I was in a Disney training program that asked a question of the 15 of us. The exercise was just write down the thing that vexes you most about your job. At that time, I was working uh, in digital and print media. And I wrote, you know, the thing that frustrates me is like, it's nice to have annual priorities that you can work on and measure. Um, but in digital, man, priorities seem to be every three months, every two months. Like, they're just changing all the time. So then the next part of the exercise was invert that statement and look at it and ask yourself whether or not that isn't actually your job. And so inverted, the statement read something along the lines of, the world in the digital space will change rapidly and it is important to master the ability to identify new priorities every two to three months. And I was like, huh. <laughs> and after that, I didn't feel so bad about the change in priorities. In fact, it was the job. It is a fun challenge when you accept that that's actually the gig. I mean, again, it, what it does is it gets rid of this mythic Shangri-La that once the changes are over, we can go back to where we were. That's just not the gig. That's not how it works. My job is to take the requisite time to deliver either in messages or responses to emails or in meetings to deliver the sense that I have considered where we are, considered where we need to go, that I respect the process and I respect the people without fail. That's all I'm getting paid to do. And anytime I fall short of that, I die a little bit. And that can be, be something as simple as realizing and rereading an email that I only responded to a seven paragraph email with like a sentence. I die over things like that. I try to work to, with great transparency with my direct reports and let them know that they have unique jobs and they have great opportunity and they have the right and the expectations to do their jobs. And they're in their jobs because they have things about them that make them uniquely qualified to do those jobs. They're not in those jobs to do the job as I would see it. That I'm open and always available for advice or to help them see parts of the picture they don't see, but they're, they are there to um, make a difference. It is our responsibility to think of ways to produce unforgettable storytelling um, and do it in a way that's responsible and fiscally responsible. The only way you do that without sort of you know, just pinching pennies is to prioritize. And then the other thing we do um, is we share our own individual priorities. So within my direct reports, I ask them to say, you tell me what you want to be able to say you achieved in the next six months. And everybody writes it down. And then we sit and have a direct reports meeting where we tell each other, these are my priorities for the next six months. And so when we ask each other for help, or when we do something on air that really kind of shows those priorities in action, we share it and we celebrate. Um, and, you know, the really cool, like I said, the really cool spirit about our room now is that people really feel like they, they are the boss of something, you know, and, that, and, they're, and the people reporting them understand that they actually have the ability to make a difference and, and make some change. Um, and I'm telling you that, there's a lot of glory to be shared when that works that way. The biggest thing is accepting responsibility that the day-to-day -day is not my job. That there are many very talented people, very thoughtful people who are constantly charged with the day-to-day. -day. And if I'm not thinking three to six months out in front, then I am not doing for them what they need me to do. Um, 
it's easier in our news organization than some others because in sports everything lies on a calendar for many months in advance. Um, I think it's true of every newsroom that we are conditioned to know exactly what to do in the case of breaking news. We know, we know how to go all hands on deck and we know how to stay extra hours and we know, you know how to move with adrenaline coursing through our veins. But we do not spend enough time thinking three to six months out about how we're going to surprise and delight people. We're carving that time out to spend with people who know things we don't know, to learn about advances in products and technology, to learn about the right conversation around how to measure your success, to examine the people that are working within your group and figure out who's ready for a next assignment and who's floundering a little bit. Um, and to spend time with our bosses so that they know what we're doing rather than making the assumption that they're reading everything we're editing or they are watching everything we're producing. Change isn't just the constant, it's our job. Um, because our audience changes. Uh, and constantly changes and constantly challenges us to work harder to surprise them. It's the nature of the gig. And when you're clear about that, when my bosses are clear about that, it forces me to um, raise my game and think about things in a different manner. But it really does start with, with the sense of optimism, positivity, uh, uh, a sense that you know hope is a reasonable thing. You're the walking embodiment of the culture. So what you say and how you show up, um, how you stand in the room, whether or not you're ever in the room, how you sit at the table, uh, how you allow people to be at the table and be active in the table, it all establishes culture. Um, you know, the best bosses I've had have known how to craft the memos from time to time that make people feel as though their work has been acknowledged. Um, and that writing matters. You really don't have, can't take any plays off as a leader presenting what culture is. I remember when I was in digital, um, when I first got into digital, people there were relatively younger. Not a lot of people had families. You know, so four or five years in, you start seeing that people have young kids. So we had a, we had a town hall meeting, and it was based in content and the things we were doing. And, in that meeting, I just felt it was really important to tell people, you know, it was in October, and two weeks later it would be Halloween, and I felt it was really important to tell people, listen, so my office overlooks the parking lot, and in two weeks, at five o'clock, I want to see people leaving the building, because I know you want to leave the building. So we're just going to have to figure out how we get everything done, but it's Halloween, you got to go. And by the way, I'll be right behind you. Um, you, just, you just have to live to that. Because again, like, you know, the, no matter how complicated these office, offices get, no, no matter how complicated our workload gets, we don't get anything done without people being willing to follow. And if they're not their, their authentic selves, if they're not their whole selves, or if what we're doing diminishes that fire they brought with them into the workplace, then that's not their fault, it's ours.